Hello and welcome to the Dustin and Eric podcast show brought to you by Mimosa Networks. Hi, I'm Dustin. And I'm Eric. And today we have a very special episode and we're going to talk about the Mimosa C5X. We also have a special guest today with us, Brian Hinman. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me again. No problem at all. And so let's just jump right in here to uh, our main course, the Mimosa C5X. So as you can see here, we have four different antenna options. We have our box there, it looks beautiful, and the actual C5X radio itself. So what was the actual motivation to create something like this? Well, we were looking at what we would do in terms of our CPE products. And uh, <clears throat> we, the C5 product, as you guys know, it's a 20 dBi antenna. A lot of the rural uh, shots that people do, they prefer the 25 dBi, and there's a lot of that product out there that's integrated today. So up to this point, people that wanted a higher gain, they'd have to take the C5C and put a big dish on it. And so we were trying to address the 25 dBi requirement. And in going through that, we realized, well, we could be proliferating a whole bunch of different new SKUs, and that's not great for us from a manufacturing perspective. Mm -hmm. It's not great for the operator either. So we came up with this idea, hey, what if we could make a modular radio where you got one radio, and then depending on what your application is, you install different size antenna. All right. So uh, here on the screen, we've got the uh, little horn, the medium-sized horn, then the first dish and the second dish. So what are the gains on these? Well, the, <clears throat> the radio by itself, you could operate the thing just uh, naked, uh, and it's about an 8 dBi. And then the little baby horn uh, right next to it, <clears throat> that gets it up to about uh, 12 dBi. And then uh, the next gain up is the horn next to it there that Eric's pointing to, and that's a 16 dBi horn. Um, at that point, then we switch into parabolics, and the lowest gain parabolic we have is the one that's to the left there. That's a 20 dBi, uh, same size aperture as the, as the C5 is today. And then <clears throat> the 25 dBi is the 400 millimeter one that's shown up above there. So we've got uh, the four different an antenna choices. So here's uh, the 20 on the, the actual C5X. So this thing feels pretty heavy duty. So what is this thing made out of? Well, we decided to go all metal this time around. So it's uh, aluminum on the back, aluminum on the front. It's a very rigid product, and we did that to give it the strength so that it can support these different size uh, uh, dishes and, and make it so it's a product that hopefully will last for 10 years or more. Excellent. And are we envisioning, uh, like, third parties making antennas for the C5X? Well, that's entirely possible. I, we talked about uh, the idea that maybe you would use a radio like this in a, in a reflector style. So there's uh, some of the companies like uh, KP Performance mm -hmm. that make the off-axis reflectors. That's certainly a possibility. And as you guys know, first install we did was uh, pointing one of these things into a 10-foot dish, which was kind of a fun thing to do. And do a long shot with that. Right. So that was uh, with a, a C5C on one end and a C5X on the other. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, most definitely uh, at a, distance a fun of, product to, to play with. At a distance of uh, 50, almost 56 miles. Yeah, it's yeah. a long yeah. shot. Excellent. Yeah, it is. So uh, Now, you mentioned, uh, I'm sorry, you mentioned, so as is, you can take the C5X as is, no horn, and you get 8 dB right out of the... Uh, uh, ATBI, off, off, yeah, right, ATBI, yeah, ATBI right straight, straight off of it. So I'm sure the short, short yeah. distance kind of applications you're going building to building where you could just use the radio by itself. Yeah, we did some uh, testing uh, like that with the short links. Uh, so there, there's a little. This is all weatherized. A uh, little ca cap here that's that's on board and. Yeah, there's Ready a, to go. the the, the uh, gasket's actually on the antennas, oh, okay. and uh, when you screw it in, it mates up against it, seals completely. Um, and then uh, to make sure the thing never backs out, it's like plumbing. So it's like a piece of Schedule 40 plumbing fixture. But to make sure it doesn't back out, we have a little set screw. So at the, at the end, okay. the idea is you turn that little thing in and it goes into a slot. Boom, it's never coming out. Okay. So are there any other things about these antennas that make them different from uh, other antennas out there today? Well, we've been talking a lot about antennas recently. And, of course, we had the session. We went through the new N545s. Uh, <clears throat> the whole world's full of interference these days, especially in the five gig band, as you guys know better than I do. And uh, so you got problems both on the tower locations with interference, and you also have the problem at the uh, premises, customer premises, whether that's a business or a home, five gigahertz interference everywhere. So as a result, improving your side lobe projection is critically important. And so both in the horns, which are inherently you know, better in terms of side lobe projection, um, you know, if what you do on the horns, on the bigger one, let me see if we can get the cover off. We left this one not glued in just so we can show it. Uh, <clears throat> the horns have these rings that go around on the inside, 
and those are called choke rings, and that really knocks down your side lobes quite a bit. So that's that's kind of the design uh, goal uh, with the horns is, is to make that happen. And with the parabolics, it's a slightly different solution. So with the parabolics in the past, and m many of our competitors have done this as well, the feed oftentimes is projected out beyond the surface of the front of the dish. Now, the problem with that is if you can see the feed from the side, it means that it's going to pick up interference as well. Right. So you'll notice in both the uh, 400 millimeter and the 250, what we've done is we've pulled back the feed so it's down inside the dish, yeah. and that way uh, you're improving your side lobe projection. So these are the, kind of the techniques. With the horns, you want to put the rings inside, and with the parabolics, you want to pull your feed back so that the rays are actually coming down into the feed that way. Mm -hmm. So with the release of the N545 uh, last month, uh, Mimosa has the projection uh, of hating horns. So why do we have horns uh, with the C5X? Well, I think, you know, horns, there's nothing wrong with horns. Horns are, are a good thing. I, I, our objection to the use of horns for access points is in most cases, your subscribers are spread out over 45 degrees or something like that. And then maybe in the elevation angle, you can narrow the thing up to nine degrees. So rather than having a circular pattern for your access point, in most cases, a sector is going to make more sense. But now when you get down into the customer premises side of things, a, a circularly symmetric horn is a perfectly good solution. And again, it provides, with the rings inside, the choke rings, it provides awesome side low projection. So all the stuff that's going on in the house, and inevitably mm -hmm. somebody's going to have something running in the 5 gig band, happens to be on the same channel you're using for your access network. Um, this knocks down all of the interference that's coming from inside the house. Okay. You've got, you got a client here, you got, and his neighbor, you've got a couple of neighbor uh, or commercial uh, clients behind that or off to the sides, and we've yeah, got some fantastic front to back. Yeah, you need that. Reduction. You need that. Both your, you know, we call it front to side ratio, which is looking down into the house, but then to your point, it could be front to back yeah. as well. So right. just knocking everything down except the direction you're looking is the goal. So Brian, where does this product fit in with the existing uh, client family? So today we've been shipping the C5 for several years, and the C5C has become really popular over the last uh, year and a half. Um, we're going to continue selling the C5Cs, uh, super popular, the extended frequency range. People are hooking those things up to large dishes, typically two-foot, sometimes three-foot dishes, a lot of that that's going on out there. And the C5, uh, we're going to be phasing it out. So this product is going to be taken yeah. over that range, and you have products now, instead of being fixed at 20 dBi, which is what the C5 has been, you've got products ranging again and gain from your raw 8 dBi all the way through 20 up to 25. So that's that's the multi, intent here. Multi-gain, yep. Okay. So uh, I know the N545 uh, is uh, usable between 4.9 and 6.4 gigahertz. I assume that this will also be able to do the same thing? Definitely. I mean, we're, we're all about the extended frequency range these days, so 4.9 to 6.4. And uh, most of the market we've seen has been outside the United States, especially uh, down in, in Latin America. That, that band is just super popular. Right. Great news for us is uh, word uh, from our FCC friends is that we're going to take some action here in the United States. So uh, it, by next year, perhaps, we'll have 5.9 to 6.4 open in the United States. And so if, if nothing else, even for the operators in the United States, buying this product is future-proofing you yourself. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That, that's definitely a whole new band uh, to pollute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so there are a lot of customers interested um, in Mimosa Ethernet performance. So what have what have we done with the C5X? Yeah, we've done, done a lot of work on the Ethernet side of things. I mean, you've got your ESD protection, which we've uh, improved dramatically there. Um, we've also changed the flyover. We're, we're using a new Qualcomm Fi that we think is a much better choice uh, for the product. Um, and then we've also changed the powering of it. So we have a wider uh, voltage range that allows us to either operate at 48 volts or all the way down to 24 yeah, volts. So great. all of these, I think, are good improvements on the, on the Ethernet side. All right. So do you want to talk about, uh, can you talk about how much this is, base price? So the, the base price for the product, we try to get really aggressive on that side of things. It's uh, $59 for the base product. And the base product out of the box um, runs at uh, 100 base T speed and is uh, for point-to-multipoint applications. So that's the where we see the bulk of the volume going. And, and uh, a lot of folks, if you're trying to provide like a 25 megabit service, it's a real value-based uh, pricing solution. Okay. Can you elaborate on what we can do with uh, a higher tier pa uh, pricing for this then? Since this is a base is at 59 for point-to-multipoint and 
100 meg. So what, what else can we get out of it? So we have uh, a couple of option keys or feature keys, as we call them, that are available for the product. Uh, one of them takes the product up to 1,000 base T speeds. Mm -hmm. So for people who are offering those 100 meg plus services out there, they're going to want to buy that feature, that feature key. And then <clears throat> the other uh, feature key we have is for applications that are point to point, which are higher value applications, there's another feature key for point to point. So uh, with the feature keys, how will the mobile app support it between some of the uh, uh, Samsung platforms and uh, iOS, et cetera? Right. So we have two uh, mobile apps today, as you know, where we've got uh, both for the Android platform as well as for iOS. And we're going to enhance those mobile apps because most people install it that way. It's just way easier to put in Mimosa yeah. radios if you've got the mobile app. So the mobile app will now also include as part of that install flow asking if you want to upgrade with these feature right. keys. And so you put that in at that time. And the key, it's once you uh, once you've used that key for one radio, that's it. That key sticks to that radio for that particular key, right? And then there's a notion of what we call the wallet. wallet so yeah. you you buy feature keys, and then they're sitting in your account. And so then when you go to redeem them, they're used up. Okay. Yep. So uh, backing up here just a little bit back to Ethernet and uh, the basic package of 100 meg on the radio. Say if somebody wants to just use 100 meg on their radio, should they still run Cat 6, or can they use mm. Cat 5e and be okay? Yeah, we get, we get a lot of questions around this. and that, So cer certainly for people that are going to take the base product where the Ethernet 5 is set at 100 base T, um, sure, go ahead and use uh, uh, Cat 5e because people have a lot of Cat 5e cable out there. Okay, and uh, another thing here is looking at the back here, we've got a spot for two... Uh, pipe clamps or hose clamps. So when you've got this hooked up to the 25 dBi dish, uh, how's the wind loading on that? So that's been a really important part of the design. And again, part of the motivation for going all aluminum was around that. So this design up through the 400 millimeter has been gone through finite element analysis up to 125 mile an hour winds. Mm -hmm. So that's our goal is that these things should be able to survive 125 mile an hour storms and have no issue whatsoever. So what about... Uh, Ex expanding and contracting in heat and cold in the the pipe clamps will that cause it to loosen up and turn or is it going to be pretty solid it's, it should be super solid um, as we've seen uh, with other products on the pipe clamps as you get down to the really small diameter down to like the 32 millimeter you start having some issues and so there I think we've been recommending people maybe put mastic on if you have a really narrow pole but sure. for any of the poles 38 millimeter on up uh, it's fine it's super tight okay and uh, I guess uh, one more question I have here is how soon can we expect people to be getting these and putting them up? So the products will be shipping from uh, uh, manufacturing uh, in November, so mid-November. So by the end of the month, I think we're going to start having a lot of this product appearing in the field uh, in November. Excellent. Uh, I personally can't wait to get more uh, myself and put them up, and I'm sure that there's plenty of people out there who are excited to, to put these up as well. So uh, looking forward to it. That's a fun All new right. product. Um, Eric, you, you've actually installed some of these. You want to tell us a little bit about your uh, your experience putting these up, how easy or how hard they might be? Yeah, I put uh, I put a pair up at a third of a mile uh, with the 16 dB uh, horn on it, and it was uh, pretty uh, pretty quick and simple. So you don't really have any kind of uh, vertical adjustment here. So what did you use? Yeah, I used a little flexi mount, or a little, uh, little tiny mount. So uh, I put that's, that up. That, that, that guy there, right? Yeah, that's it oh, right there. One. Yeah, so you're able to to do a little bit of angle, uh, down angle with that, or uh, down tilt. Um, it's pretty, just tighten it up, uh, peaked it, and uh, away it went. And these things are pretty light, so that's really light, yeah. barely any weight on that flexi mount whatsoever. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so it went pretty easy, really easy to align. Uh, yeah. Simple. Um, I found uh, at, with the 16 dB little guy, the little horn, had some flexibility in there. I was looking at the peak RSSI, and uh, it worked out nice. And I thought, okay, I think I'll lock it down right here. All right. Well, it sounds <laughs> like that uh, anybody who's putting the, putting these up will have hardly any trouble at all. So again, looking forward to actually getting them out in the field and having people actually put them up. Yeah, I think I think what's going to be really nice is to have people make the comparison with other other products that are out there. Both things that we've done as well as other competitive products because this side low projection I think is a really big deal and uh, people will be picking up a couple of MCS levels just on that basis alone. Yeah, right. go to the uh, go to the spectrum on the uh, UI and, and oh, see, yeah. see what you're doing and actually rotate it and flip it around a little bit see uh, see how it plays. You know? yeah. yep. All right well I guess that's it Brian thank you for coming in. Thank you guys. And, uh, thank you. Thanks for talking awesome about pleasure. this awesome product the C5X so uh, I guess we'll see you guys next time on our next podcast.
Thanks for tuning in. Please hit the subscribe or follow button to stay up to date with our latest podcast, which will be available on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud.